Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for participating in the official opening session of Nanomed Europe 2019, the leading European conference on nanomedicine. To welcome all of you, your host, the Director General of INL, Lars Montelius. Thank you very much. So, good morning, everyone. It's a real great pleasure to see so many here in the audience, and uh, we are looking forward. You already kickstarted the conference yesterday, so we are halfway, kind of, and it's a great pleasure now to have the opportunity to speak with you all, and uh, wish you very welcome to INL. Uh, this conference is a kind of a it's, it belongs very strongly to my heart, and I would, I would tell you why. And it has to do with, we, we know today that we're speaking a lot about circular economy, right? And there are some circular events that relate me to this conference that maybe not so many of you know, right? So I go back in time, and once upon a time, I participate in a, in a small project run by Patrick, Nano to Life, which was the, really the first project in Europe that tried to bring together people working in nanotechnology and move them into the utilization in the life sciences. So it was a big project, and uh, here you can see the, the kind of uh, document from the commission, right? And here is the kind of project summary. And I think it's interesting to look at the project summary. So if you read, I don't know if you can read from the back there. Um, you don't need to read everything, right? But it's about merging European expertise and knowledge uh, to keep Europe as a competitive partner of the United States and Japan and to make it the leader in nanobiotechnology transfer in four years' time. So just a very small uh, vision, right, to do that in four years. So nano to life is tackling fragmentation, etc., etc. The aim is to set up a virtual European non-biotech institute. And then comes uh, that we have agreed to work together in a young program. We should uh, work on research projects, four major platforms, functionalization, handling, detection, integration of devices, elaborate a joint IPR policy, novel education, and a future common RTD platform. So these were kind of the objectives, right? And there was 170 researchers, so it was one of these mega projects that was developed within the, I think it was the six framework program. And one outcome was, uh, I think a very novel thing, which was uh, uh, an exhibition that was put on different airports in Europe. And they, it lasted there at these airports for some time. It's maybe not so much about what actually was the learning outcome of having people to look on this, but was more the articulation of putting science out there to the common people that are visiting an airport, inside the airport, inside the departure area, and the way that people could start to relate to this. So it was a piece of conversation. So it's not so much about what, what's exactly shown there, but I think the whole setting, the whole architecture behind this was really very nice. And this happened for some years, right? So this is my kind of connection to this, to this, um, to this meeting. So I know Patrick since many, many years back, and we have been kind of working in parallel in many different aspects in Europe since that time. So now I'm proud to be here as the director general of INL, and would like to say some few words about that. So you have seen the building already. Uh, some of you participated in the in the show yesterday uh, of the lab, so I think you've seen that. So I just would like to point out some things, and this is the only, the world's only intergovernmental research laboratory on, I would say, on key enabling technologies, or more specifically on nanotechnology advanced materials. There is no one else. So it's a, it's a kind of a new structure in the research domain that we are trying to explore to the fullest possible value. So it's a new thing. It was started by the Spanish and the Portuguese government as a top-down decision. We used the European funding to fund it, 
as well as member states funding. So the total investment was about 100 million euro. Last year we had our 10th anniversary and we are now, I think, in a, in a very high kind of deployment mode. So we have had an increase, annual increase of about 40% every year, the last five years. So we have went from 60 people five years ago when I was recruited here to about 420 people right now from 40 different countries. So it's a very rapid growth, and all the numbers, publications, patents, etc., it has the same kind of growth. So it's really a very sustainable growth way forward. Um, we have people working with us in many different places, in Scandinavia, in Brussels, in Israel, in Dubai, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Austin, Texas, and Boston. So we are working internationally. We are in, truly an intergovernmental laboratory with, and the only intergovernmental laboratory, actually, that has the mandate to work all over the world. So the other two research organizations that are intergovernmental can only work in Europe. This is the CERN and the EMVL. Their mandate is only European. We are the only one with the worldwide mandate. So uh, we have a lot of things here. We have the Nano Startup Program. We have our incubator. We have our INL IP Ventures, which is our commercial fully owned daughter company, a Portuguese company that explore our IPs. And we have the Scale Travels program, which is an artist in residence program, but much more than that, much more related to articulation of science in society. Um, the different departments, we have six. Electronics engineering, life sciences, quantum energy materials, micro nanofabrication, photonics, advanced microscopy and spectroscopy. So these are the research department, 22 research groups. And our model is really to do I would say the I3 model, which is invent, integrate, and innovate. And I think all of us know that today, more than ever, there is a need to integrate. Integrate disciplines, integrate people, integrate value chains, in order to be able to really not only cut the stones, but also to build cathedrals. So in the past, everything was about cutting stone, be the best person in the world, to cut your stone or to do your specific research. Now it's a completely different game. We need to show how we put science, knowledge, into societal development in an integrated, coherent way. So this is what we do at INL, the INL I3 model. So we offer a research contracted possibility and also a worldwide connectivity. And we have this unique model for innovation. So, to, to just to kind of point out where we are right now, I think the organization in rapid growth. We are changing the organization in order to cope with this rapid growth and also with our future internationalization and developing the sustainable business model for us. So our kind of keywords are to be committed and proud. So we try to excel, not only to do things but to do thing, the right things in the best possible way. And with that, I just would like to say thank you for listening, and again, very welcome to INL. Thank you. Unfortunately, due to last-minute official commitments, the Portuguese Minister for Science, Technology and Higher Education, Manuel Leitor, was not able to join us. Nevertheless, he addresses his congratulations to you all and wishes the best for the works of this relevant conference. And now, representing the Spanish Minister for Science in Universities, please welcome Jose Juan Sanchez Serrano, Deputy Director General for the Internationalization of Science and Innovation. Um, well. Um, so, okay, so I'm really pleased to be here and be able to welcome you all to the International Liberian uh, Nanotechnology Laboratory. It's great to, to have you here for the, for the Nanomed meeting. Um, it's very, very few words I can say uh, in addition to what the director has, has said already. So I think this is a, a joint effort done by the, the 
Portugal and, and Spain uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, and it was not without doubts that we started this, this project. Um, I think now is is more or less consolidated. We are still growing. And uh, this is something that, as the director said before, started as, as, a, as a Spanish and Portuguese uh, initiative, but is is bound to be international, truly international. And we are, uh, and I, I know the director is uh, actively looking for these partnerships and st expanding the, the, the collaborations around the world in, in developing nanotechnologies and the use of those, those technologies, not only in research, but also in the connection with the, with the industry. Um, I don't really want to take your, your time for, uh, uh, but I, I just want to here acknowledge the work done by, by the director. I really very much appreciate the work uh, uh, Lars, the director, has been doing in the, in the recent years to expand the capacities of this lab, of this center. It's impressive what he has done in, in, in the last year for us. And I really hope you have a nice time here. You 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 have the the time to to uh, look for new collaborations, to to refresh the old ones, and still have some time to 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 uh, visit and see what we are doing here, what the the INL is is doing, the research that that's been doing here, also to visit this beautiful part of the world, how we come here to this remote part of Europe, but uh, I think it it's a, was a fantastic choice, to, and, and I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy that the major of, of uh, the city is, is able to join us in this, in this occasion. So anyway, thanks a lot for coming here, and, and enjoy your time uh, in, in the meeting. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now our honor to call to the stage the mayor of the vibrant and innovative city of Praga, Ricardo Rio. Good morning. I would obviously start by greeting our host, my dear friend Lars Montilius, director of INL, the representative of the Spanish government, and the former and the new chairman of TPN and all the participants in this nanomedicine conference. Also, obviously, the researchers and workers of ANL that are living and obviously contributing to these figures that Lars just presented to you. I'll start by adding that um, in his presentation, he had a, a mistake, or at least uh, he neglected an aspect that is very important for the success of ANL, is that ANL is not seated in any city. It's seated in Braga. And obviously, the best thing that uh, INL provides to the researchers that work here is the quality of life of the city, one that has been accounted, uh, according to the Eurobarometer, as one of the happiest cities in Europe in 2015, with 97% of our population saying that they are happy to live here. So that leaves, obviously, me very happy as well as a mayor to uh, know of these results. Throughout these days that you'll stay in the city, you'll obviously have the opportunity to enjoy a bit of the city, what the city has to offer. We are just celebrating one of our biggest annual events, the St. John festivities. And uh, apart from that, you are from here, from the INL, at a short distance from one of our biggest uh, visit cards, which is the Bon Jesus, which is currently applying for World Heritage and which is a very nice walk, even with this light rain. But the city has a lot of monuments, a lot of uh, singular places to visit, uh, a great gastronomy, a lot of uh, cultural activities. And so it is actually a very interesting city for the ones that visit us and for the ones that live here. But uh, the biggest question, and that will be my, my, my main point here, is that uh, probably with a couple of surprises, uh, nobody will guess that this type of scenario, this type of city, would also be a city that is a good ecosystem and a fertile uh, land for innovation and for research. And actually that has been the biggest transformation that the city recorded in recent years. 
because of the work of INL, which is a very important project that links the Portuguese and the Spanish government, and obviously uh, we benefited a lot from this implementation in our city, but also because of the work of the University of Minho, which is one of the newest in the country, but already accounted as one of the best in Europe in specific areas, and the medicine area is one in which they are on top. Probably the medicine school from the University of Minho is the best in Portugal right now. And uh, they have a very interesting project of research together with the hospital, the public hospital that is also seated in the city, which is the Clinical Academic Center. And altogether, these institutions, the work that has been done here by the research institutes has a lot of uh, sequence in the connection with the community, in the connection with the economic agents, and obviously is the great opportunity for the ones that want to research, for the ones that want to innovate, for the ones that want to invest, for the ones that want to create their own entrepreneurial projects, because here in Braga, through the municipality, through Invest Braga, and through the Startup Braga project, we also have a great pro support for the entrepreneurs, in specifically in the areas of nanotechnology, the health sciences, biotechnology, and IT. And therefore, I think that uh, uh, going back into Lars' speech and doing into the beginning of his speech, maybe this conference is the beginning of a circular history. When you, in five years' time, because now the time uh, goes very fast and we can't wait 17 years to go back, uh, you'll say that uh, you fell in love with Braga when you visited us for this conference and that's why you started your project here. That's what I wish and that uh, you enjoy the presence in the city throughout this conference. Thank you very much. To close this opening session, we will now have a double presence of the outgoing and the elected chairman of ETPN. To say goodbye to all of you after his fruitful mandate, please give a warm welcome to Patrick Boisseau. Good morning, everybody. You know, this is a very emotional moment for me. Not just because Lars did some archaeological work, let's say, in his computer, trying to find some excellent memories. I, I, I must confess, I forgot the, the, the booth in the airport made by... By the way, the guy who made the booth is in the room. It's Klaus Michael Weltring here from Germany. And, well, I would say I would share the same emotion as Lars, because, well, as he told you, let's say we are good old friends from uh, 17 years now. And uh, 17 years ago, let's say, we shared the same vision, which is not uh, uh, finalized now, to further develop, let's say, the nanomedicine community, academic and industrial community in Europe. And now more recently, let's say, to put, let's say, nanomedicine in the wider landscape of pharmaceut pharmaceutical and uh, uh, medical technologies uh, space. And uh, being celebrating, you know, this uh, fifth or fourteenth uh, annual meeting of ETPN in Braga is not just another annual meeting. This is really different for many reasons. First, because this is the largest ever annual meeting and NME uh, uh, 19, with uh, I think nearly 300 registered participants. So of course, uh, uh, this, this is the, the highest numbers of participants. And uh, well, even though Braga is famous all over Europe, this is not just because it's okay, it will be in Braga and then everybody registered. No, this has been, this major success has been uh, achieved because, let's say, it is a joint effort of the ATPN General Secretary. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Alex Cicardi, who is in the back, General Secretary of ATPN, who has been interacted continuously. I was uh, about to say night and days with the INL organizing committee here. And uh, INL, of course, it was under the leadership of Lash, but all the INL team, and I mean uh, Christina, Philippa, Lorena, and colleagues, they have done a tremendous work in a so highly professional way that, you know, I've been very, very impressed by, let's say, the, the, the commitment, their delivery, and they are all their efforts, continuous effort to make it a success. And the success is here. So I'm very happy that we are celebrating here in this nice city of Braga, this 14th anniversary. 
And those who have attended the General Assembly yesterday, you know, uh, you now you're convinced, I hope so, that uh, we are at a real turning point, moving, let's say, from nanomedicine only towards, let's say, the wider field of health technologies. Because what we have demonstrated within the nanomedicine now should be expanded uh, to, the, to the rest of the health tech space. And uh, well, for those who know him, I just got a message yesterday night from Christos Tokamanis, the former head of unit at the European Commission, and he was, let's say, uh, gi giving his best regards. And uh, because he was the, the one who, let's say, four years ago, had the vision, okay, nanomedicine is like, let's say, like a pilot or a demo, let's say, in the, in the health tech uh, uh, or pharmaceutical technologies uh, space. And now we have successfully developed the tab, the pilot lines, the reference characterization laboratory, and so on. All these tools which are very successful for the community. And by the way, the tab, which is one of our most successful tab for translation advisory board, was bought at Techminio, so next door. So this is one of the best achievements at ETPN. And thanks to uh, Pedro Silva, I don't know if Pedro is in the room, and thanks to Pedro Silva at Techminio, we have been able to start, uh, uh, most uh, four years ago, the translation advisory board, which has now served over 150 different nanomedicine projects in Europe so successfully. And I like the, the figures. By investing uh, uh, approximately 500k euro, we have, gener we have leveraged 15 million euro of funding for these companies. So this is probably the most successful uh, uh, European investment in nanomedicine. And it has been so successful that right now we, we have, let's say, to, to we are always demanding, and we have to go further to expand this. So I'm very happy that we are celebrating this new era, let's say, in nanomedicine here in Braga, in this fantastic uh, infrastructure, the INL, and uh, uh, even more happy celebrating this with friends, not only on stage, but also in the room. And uh, well, anyway, I'm part of the, what uh, Klaus called the dinosaurs, you know, of nano to life. Lars, I'm sorry, you are an, another dinosaur, I'm sorry to say so. So now it's up to the young generation, to the PhDs in the room, to the postdocs in the rooms, to the, all the scientists below 30, 35 years to take the leads for the, for the next 10 years. And, uh, I will, and I will end up with, uh, let's say, uh, repeating this message. Yesterday, a new board of, the, the new board, the board of ETPN has been renewed totally. All the people have, uh, have uh, resigned and a new board has been elected. So it's up to, to the new board, let's say, to write the new chapter in, in the nanomedicine and health tech story. And for that, I think there is nobody else than Ruth Schmidt, who will lead the, this new uh, achievement. And uh, I would like to thank very much to thank you, uh, Ruth, for accepting this uh, responsibility. Of course, the dinosaurs will, will stay behind and will be at your disposal if you need. And uh, so I would like to, to wish you a very successful conference here. This is the base place. And as Lars said, you know, because it is an intergovernmental organization which is unique in Europe, this is a special taste, a special spirit you cannot find in any of our places because we are single organizations. So it's already a taste, let's say, of international cooperation, interdisciplinary cooperation. So thank you very much for your attendance. I hope you will enjoy these two days. We have a wonderful program with a full of very interesting speakers and talented speakers. But my final words, Nan ETPN, sorry, I was about to say nano to life. ETPN, e ETPN is like a big family. Well, this is like a family meeting, I would say. We have just 300. Sometimes in big families, you have 300 people meeting together. So just keep your networking attitude. Just don't be shy. Go to everybody, say hello, yes, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And develop your networking activities because this is the seed for a future successful project. Thank you very much for your participation. I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you. And now, please, please welcome the newly elected chairman of ETPN, Ruth Schmidt. Good morning, everybody. And uh, first of all, thank you for having elected me and for trusting me that I can fill the shoes of Patrick and his team and bring ETPN into the future, into the new 
environment of Horizon Europe. We have to adapt, we have to change, but we will be strong and we want to be visible. We want to be the think tank for nanomedicine and we want to be the ambassador for nanomedicine in this new environment. Um, I, uh, I, I'm very lucky because I came to a, a ready program with a, a great science and innovation and a lot of space for networking. I didn't uh, contribute at all to the organization, so I would like to thank once more to, INL, to the INL team and to the ETPN team, Alex and Patrick, that put together this program. And uh, my message to you is get inspired and get connected. Enjoy the conference. Well, thank you very much. That was normally these are boring sessions, the opening. That was inspiring. Thank you very much. That was excellent. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Well, now we'll move to science, right? So uh, you need to, let's say, split the ones that are, have a patient for nanotherapeutics, which is 95% of the people here, should stay here. But if you want to discover the great advance of the TAB, of the UNCL, of the pilot lines, uh, well, what the ETPN does to bring your project further to the clinic, just stand up right now and go to the ETPN tent. It's fully secured. Uh, and so come by and we have a great st session starting now, okay? And so the coffee break will start maybe 10 minutes late, but it's around 11.10, okay? Enjoy the session, enjoy your day. <laughs>